Hey guys, today is June 13th, 2023. The time is 10.23 a.m. Central or 11.23 Eastern Standard. Um, I've already traded my Apex funded account for today and uh, made a good profit there, so I'm done trading that. This is my uh, live cash um, trade station account. And we're going to be trading the Micro Russell. So you can see I've already been trading the Micro Russell. And what I'm working on today is um, algorithmic signatures. So we're looking for uh, signatures and price that we can trade off of. Um, and um, I'll, I'll get some of these. Uh, I'll get some of these levels off. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long I'm going to record today, maybe an hour, maybe less, but I want to video journal my trade. So this is the Micro Russell and it's the lowest um, leverage um, contract that you can trade. So I think I only have 500 bucks in here. Um, yeah, so not a lot of money for sure, but um, anyways. Um, as you can see, I've just been scalping this up and down and up and down. So, when I'm talking about algorithmic signatures, what I'm talking about um, are these uh, order blocks. Every single one of them price reacts to. You know, whether the reaction is large, small, uh, indifferent. Every single inefficiency and every single order block price is going to react to. And the, the real question is uh, where price is going to react, I guess, more strongly than not. But every single inefficiency and every single order block, which is a liquidity signature, price is going to in some way react to and I want to make a video on this at some point but um, I've started trading a system that's based off of IT, ICT principles and based off of um, algorithmic theory but it's essentially what I call the magic 50s and the magic 50s is basically wherever I want to trade I drag this um, 50 fib and that's where I'm going to try and enter exactly at the 50 and so if we go pull up my executions again you'll see that um, that's what I'm doing is I'm always entering at 50 percent of an inefficiency or an order block always exactly at 50 percent um, sometimes I won't get filled that's fine more often than not you'll notice that uh, in fact I do get filled um, and sometimes it's the top tick sometimes it's very close to the top tick but that's what these high frequency trading algorithms are working off of is they're working off of a series of um, as far as I can tell this is all obviously empirical evidence but they work off of a series of if then statements based on 50 percent levels of prior price action so I'm looking to see whether price closes below an algorithmic signature closes above an algorithmic signature and then I'm also looking uh, I have a couple of rules that I, I, I keep in place or a couple drawings that I want to have in place at all times. So I always want to have a weekly level, uh, at least one weekly level on the chart at all times, preferably two. I might also put a daily level on there if it's really obvious, but I always want to have uh, weekly draws on every chart that I trade. I'm going to have a weekly fair value gap or a weekly volume imbalance or a weekly gap. Uh, it's going to be on there. So that way I have, uh, even though I'm trading the lower time frames, I have, uh, I have an idea of what the higher time frames are doing. So we're coming up halfway to New York lunch. We're, in the, we're currently in uh, the time when the London Stock Exchange would be closing. And um, yeah, so as you can see, I just draw this quick fib. It's 50%. And uh, now that I'm talking and I'm recording a video, um, I'm just going to bring it down to one. So 
Um, I'm already up, I think, 50 or 60 bucks on the session. So I have some room to maneuver. Um, one of the things that I've, you know, noticed in my trading uh, inefficiencies is that um, inefficiencies, order blocks, ICT, algorithmic signatures, is um, I definitely find myself trading against the quote-unquote trend more often than not. Uh, it's not that I'm trying to do that per se, but I'm always trying to go short whenever the market's going up and long whenever the market's going down. So it doesn't necessarily mean I'm doing anything wrong inherently. Yeah, actually, I actually don't think I like this sell. Whenever you look, I'm going to pull that. Whenever you look at an order and then you just visually look at it in the range that you're working with and it's kind of in the middle, it's probably not good. Unless it's like a first retracement. You want it to be... Um, like if you're going to be trying to play reversals, you want to you want to visually just immediately instinctively see that it's at the top of the range. You don't want it to be in the middle. So price is drawing up to that 1928, which is our weekly volume imbalance. But I'm not. Sure. I don't know if we hit that today. Now, if I see that that price is going to start, um, the algorithms are going to start quote unquote spooling to it. Spooling meaning repricing aggressively with with no algorithmic signatures so no order blocks or imbalances left behind basically like just pure spooling straight to it I will put a short directly on 1928 so one of the things that I've noticed is that with your weekly gaps weekly fair value gaps uh, I mean they, they you apply the same principles that you do in the higher time frames to the lower time frames but with your weekly levels, what I've noticed is that if price is going to um, go up there for a first pass, it's almost always going to reject it. From everything I've seen, it rejects that first touch at least a few points. Doesn't mean it's usually it's going to want to go up there and, and explore that area, but uh, that first touch is usually going to get you a scalp. So, yeah, I think I I think I like trading the micro Russell here on TradeStation just cuz it allows you to trade real cash but very small. So, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for order blocks, gaps, um, every I basically I'm looking at every single order block and I'm also monitoring that weekly level at the top I'm also keeping track of what time it is so in addition to that I'm noticing that we're forming uh, a flat top Now, if I don't get filled on this and price moves, that's fine. Okay, we're filled. I'm going to put stop loss there. And uh, take profit's going to be at... I mean, this is kind of tough. It'd be right there. So... These little things are signatures. That's why you're seeing, uh, you don't necessarily know what the magnitude of the reaction is going to be, but you know that there will be a reaction on every single one of them. And it's the algorithm's way, it's high frequency trading algorithm's way of providing a reference. So using binary logic, if, uh, if then, then that. So that's what these high frequency trading algorithms are doing is they're coming down to these signatures and then um, 
that's basically how they provide a reference to themselves. And then they're going to follow a set of commands to the next signature. Now, you're kind of guessing at which signature they're going to move to. So it did give me a tiny little reaction, but it just moved up to this inefficiency right here. And it kind of looks like maybe it wants to just uh, reject that. But we've got two signatures lined up close to one another. And whenever you see that, that's a good chance that this is deception. This is a little bit of what I would call microaccumulation. Yeah. So, price swept. Now, what is a sweep? A sweep is a small, tiny poke above, um, above a range. And usually what I've noticed is that if it sweeps at once, um, it hasn't fully explored that liquidity. Now, I don't need book map or a liquidity third-party tool to know where the liquidity is. It's always going to be above short-term highs and short-term lows and long-term highs and long-term lows. That's always where the liquidity is. There are three types of stops. There's static stop, which is like what I have. It's not going to move unless I move it, and I'm not going to move it. Um, Break-even stop, so if this position goes into profit before it hits my profit target, I would move a break-even stop. And then there's trailing stops, so positions that have been uh, profitable we move their stops up to the nearest short-term higher low depending on the direction so three different types of stops that uh, market makers are going to want to capitalize on now you know one of the things that I came to my realization today is that in order to day trade well you have to be honed in so I've tried being on my trading discord during the trading day or even the overnight session and uh, unfortunately it just doesn't work um, if you're not honed in you're not honed in you're not dialed in and um, you're just not going to see it so you got to be dialed in okay so price is now deciding whether it wants to see I think this is just a little bit of accumulation here because we we have this signature and then also this signature. I'm just calling these order blocks, they're tiny. Um, I'm just calling them, they're all algorithmic signatures. And right now, the high frequency trading algorithms are following a set of commands. And there's also a phenomenon that is called, uh, and ICT went over it today, and I watch everything ICT does, Twitter space, videos, all of it and I just listen to every single word that comes out of his mouth and some of the inferences that he he makes he doesn't even always know when he's doing it but basically everything that the market does at all times is designed to fool you or it's designed to fool retail so one of the concepts that I learned that he discussed today is something called time distortion so when the market is accumulating, when the high frequency trading algorithms are given a, a set of commands, um, the market's going to grind. It's going to be very slow. It's going to be just painstakingly slow. And then whenever uh, the trading algorithms need to offset, distribute whatever positions they, they have, that's going to go uh, quickly. So that's what we call time distortion so it's a speeding up and it's a slowing down of price so I'm okay if I get stopped out here I was betting that we'd get a bounce off of one of these two signatures but it doesn't look like we will so we are stopped out and now that we've closed below that little micro range there now I'm thinking short. So we don't get short at the market, obviously. So 
after you get a close below structure, and we close below some structure here, um, it should come up, and unless it's a breakaway gap, it's going to come all the way back up to the order block above. And if it doesn't, then we'll look to get long lower. Okay. I'm trying to get long right there. So we're playing this signature right there. Right before price hits an important level, it will oftentimes slow down, hang, and that's done on that's done intentionally. Everything the market does is done intentionally. So we left an inefficiency higher. And I'm actually just going to put my take profit, write one tick in it. If we get stopped out again, that's fine. Could lose four times in a row, five times in a row. But I don't think that this is a breakaway gap because it's not at a higher time frame level. So price should want to come back immediately and fill in this gap. This gap right here. Basically the only two um, So the only two types of gaps, and ICT doesn't realize there are some folks that literally do journal everything he says, and believe me, I have notebooks, notebooks. Um, I mean, I journal everything he says. Um, in his latest video on advanced gap theory, he talks about how there are three types of gaps, and that's the breakaway gap, which initiates the move, the measuring gap, which is half the move, and the common gap. And, and the common gap is the one that can be inverted. Now, I don't particularly use inverted gaps in my, uh, my entries. I, don't, um, I think that usually it's like paired with an order block or a wick inefficiency. But you can use the inverted gap uh, concept as well. So price is going to react off every single one of these all of them sometimes even multiple times this is not supply and demand so I didn't quote unquote buy demand um, that's not what happened I, I bought an algorithmic signature betting that this inefficiency above is not a breakaway gap or a measuring gap because in order for it to be a breakaway gap it would need to be near, near uh, a high term a higher time frame level, which this is not. The higher time frame level is, is up at 1928. Okay, so I think that price is going to want to come in. And um, 
Yeah, so let's see that. 1912.5, and the low was... All right, well, less than a point off. So that was good. So. And not a perfect exit. Like, I was right. It did fully fill in that gap. Now, if uh, I want to give a shout out to LP Trades if he's watching, because I don't think there's that many people that do watch me. So if there's anybody who is watching this video, it'd probably be him. But uh, yeah, price is going to react off of every single one of these because it's an algorithm, it's high frequency trading algorithms, or the algorithm. Now, the this is not a model 22 because it hasn't broken structure, so we don't want to we don't want to bet inside the inside the new gap. Although this is a balanced price range now, right on the one minute time frame, so. It's very, you know, this could be setting up as a dis is an accumulation to go short, or it could be spooling to go higher to that weekly time frame level. Now, I have a feeling that it's spooling higher to go to that. I think it's being drawn up to that weekly fair value gap high that uh, we have not quite hit yet on this contract, 1928. So that's what I'm thinking is happening. Now, I'm going to get long here. It's going to be a little bit aggressive. But I'm betting that this is a balanced price range and it should be attracted to the 50% of this uh, balanced price range right here. Now, the problem is we are, we are leaving sell side liquidity intact. So I don't feel great about this long. I don't feel terrible about it. I feel pretty indifferent. But I have a feeling we've been contracting our volatility, contracting gamma for a while now. So I think... Um, I think we're about ready for an expansion and then I think coming into the New York lunch we're going to want to hunt some of these buy stops um, might not even want to come down and film me I doubt that it usually does want to hit that 50% you'd be surprised how often exactly 50% is the top and bottom tick that's why I call them the magic 50s and I'm thinking about doing a video called magic 50s because it will oftentimes exactly hit that 50 percent so it looks like we're going to be one tick off Let's see if it wants to come down into fill us long we're filled okay let's see if it wants to fully fill this gap it does so we're going to get out of this trade if it wants to go much lower. But I think we're building up the top side book. So everything that the market is doing is designed to fool retail. Um, the market, quote unquote, looks heavy right now, which makes me think we're about to go up. Could be wrong, obviously, and get stopped out. But one thing I've noticed is that we didn't fully fill in this gap. We're one tick short. And we're building up the buy side liquidity up here. So I'm betting that we want to at least get to 1919 to fill in that gap. Because we were one tick, yeah, one tick, sh two ticks short. So a tick on the micro Russell is, uh, is one, point one, sorry, it's one tenth of a point. It moves in uh, one tenth point, one tenth of a point ticks. So notice Notice that I'm getting into the market before there's even a break of structure, which this is riskier, obviously. But I'm betting that this this is a little balanced price range here. 
Now we're also building up some sell side liquidity. So if I see that this is wanting to go lower, then I'm going to close it. Because I can see an argument for both. So the market is constantly trying to fool every retail system that's out there. So it's going to make something, you know, this is going to look like a triangle. Um, if you're a breakout trader, you're waiting, you're thinking that you're going to sell on a breakout down here. If you're a DOM trader, you're watching the DOM and constantly being distracted by the DOM. So um, everything that the market is doing is, it, whether it's time distortion, so it's just sitting here grinding, making you anxious, uh, that's time distortion, to just obviously the way that the, how the price reacts off of certain levels and how quickly it can move away. Um, and trap you in a position. Everything is designed to to false breakouts, trapping breakout artists. Uh, everything is designed to fool the retail trader. It's ideas of support and resistance. Um, it's all very calculated to fool every retail system out there and to knock those traders out whether they're short-term, day trading, position trading, hedge fund managers. The market, the engine, the high-frequency trading algorithms are designed, coded, to trick them. So they're wanting, you know, right now my current thinking is they want retail to think that this is heavy. But I could be wrong. could actually be heavy. But their time distortion, the way they're hanging it there, makes me think that we want to we want to pop. So notice that if we hold this and we do pop, you're going to have breakout artists that are trying to basically front run a breakout to the downside, that they're going to be trapped. You're going to have people that are chart pattern trading, that are trying to trade this as a triangle. Before it breaks out, they're going to be trapped. I'm sure that whatever the DOM is always fake, so whoever's trading volume profile is certainly also fooled. The that's kind of the point of, of what the algorithm is doing. Well we're building up liquidity now on both sides of the book, so we're gonna have uh, liquidity to the sell side and we have liquidity to the buy side um, so we're going to have uh, liquidity pools on both sides it doesn't mean we're going to take both out today but it, it you know it's something to be aware of you always want to be kind of aware of where your liquidity is the other thing is right so trend traders would see that as a trend line and obviously like super basic shit like that, like trend lines. Obviously you need to stay away from that because um, the market is, is hand designed to fuck with people who believe in that. You, 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 know, you know, the problem with chart patterns is they already, the move is already done by the time they form uh, and the HFTs are, are hand coded to fool chart patterns. So You'll notice that you have to you have to anticipate. I mean, you have to have a limit order in the market, anticipating what price is going to do, 
uh, or else you won't be able to keep up with algorithms, trading algorithms. You can't beat trading algorithms by by being. You can't react to price. You have to anticipate. So, what I'm anticipating right now, what I've circled, is that we want to come in and fully fill in this gap now. If I were being greedy, I would say that, you know, usually if you have a gap with an order block right above it like this one, it usually is just going to want to trade right to it, to it and through it. So I'm going to bet we at least trade there. I'm going to say that. So at this point, we're up enough ticks that I'm going to put in a break even stop. So these are trapped positions now that the market should want to spool away from if I'm right, if my thesis is correct. If not, we're going to be stopped out now break even, which is totally fine. When the market gets really slow like this, it's time distortion. It's, it's uh, messing with your perception of time. Uh, shaking weak hands out, basically. Because there are going to be some people that are on the right side of this move that have not been sh shaken out yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this back down. I don't actually want to get stopped out before the move. But that's time distortion. Time distortion is slowing the market down before a move. Price distortion is swinging price in the opposite direction of the intended move prior to the intended move. Uh, that's price distortion. But time distortion is slowing the market down before speeding it up. And so we see more traders got short here. So if we break away from that, that would be more trapped. So we're building up a good number of trap shorts now if we go long. But I'm pretty ambivalent about this trade like I said from the start on this one I'm not very confident with it I definitely could see the the narrative downwards we have liquidity resting on both sides now We're right coming up on New York launch, which should be a an hour that we're running on liquidity. So we have liquidity to the buy side and liquidity to the sell side in even distribution. So it's possible that we run it we want to run both. So as we come up on New York lunch, in either direction, the market should be speeding up, especially on the one minute time frame. So we have sell side and buy side liquidity. It does look like we're gonna be stopped out on this one. Okay, so I'm guessing that they want to come run the sell side then. So we're going to use our magic 50.
So time has now allowed both sides of the book to be built. I'm not even convinced yet that we are going to run the sell side liquidity before the buy side. But we did. I'm now bias short. Which, if you're day trading like this, that's uh, what you need to be. So we just formed a gap. Right here. Now again, I don't really believe that in this sort of scenario, this is going to be a breakaway gap. So I think we trade through that gap that we just formed. This actually could still be a long. But I think we've built up the sell side quite a bit now. Okay, we're coming into sell side liquidity. And I think we're going to pull a fast one. Because I think we're setting up to take out both sides of the book. So a little bit of a of a calling an audible there. Your breakout artists have now gone short. But I think that this was setting up to take out both sides. That's my current thesis. Now, what could end up happening is we could get below this sell side here and then bounce. So the market just created a scenario in which it could come up and pick up sell side liquidity and now this would be a perfect opportunity to go rip and rip the buy side too. It's nice and flat up there, you know, there's plenty of buy side up there. One thing I've noticed is that we've also got a fair value gap down here and I've tended to notice that when you have these consolidation ranges that's that uh, have an order block below with a fair value gap these tend to be very strong bounce bounce points so multiple things are happening right now so number one you had all of your static stops that were hit but also all of your breakout artists who went short on the break all of those stops uh, 
added on to the liquidity as well. Now the market has been slow, uh, slow moving, which is time distortion, which means that it should speed up soon. Let's see if, if they do want to come down into this, this liquidity here. Whenever the market is in the cash session, all right, it's, no, it's not, not necessarily like the Asian session overnight, but if it's in the cash session and it's very slow, that's intentional. That's time distortion. So whenever they slow it down to a grinding halt, get ready because they're about to speed it up. Now, it really wouldn't even surprise me if this is what we needed to go all the way up to our weekly fair value gap high. Because I'm still interested in that. So now we're in New York lunch. So we are in stop hunt hour. So breakout artists, um, people that were long and had static stops there, they were all the liquidity. And you'll notice that now, what is the market doing? Well, it's picking up speed, so it's, it's going to start trapping. So these are your breakout artists here, basically and uh, they enter the market on stops rather than use use the stop for its intended purpose they enter the market on a stop and they if the market can now quickly move up to 1914 above these two candles then all of those all of those traders are going to be trapped and then the market can quickly reprice to appear Whenever you see a range like this and it's got an order block and inefficiency below, don't expect those to uh, give way on the first pass. They're, they're not going to. They're going to provide strong uh, support, quote unquote, because these are algorithmic signatures uh, basically telling high frequency tra trading algorithms to go long here. If price comes here first time, then take price, spool price higher initiate buy program so now that the market is closed above these two algorithmic signatures on the left should be seeing a speed up in velocity so not only notice the the candles in a static fashion notice the speed at which they're forming because the algorithm or the algorithms I'm just gonna call high frequency trading algorithms trading algorithms they're designed to fool retail at all times so that's why you see the slow grind down and then the quick reversal because it's designed to trap it's designed to put you in a losing position so that you have to exit at the market and when you exit at the market that's when they can offset distribute their position so we came down into liquidity first pool of liquidity we didn't get to the second pool of liquidity 
and now we're trapping traders on the you can even see that someone tried to go short here I'm assuming that would be another breakout maybe trend line that's an algorithmic signature right there as well So right after ICT says, and he said it in his video today on June 13th, 2023, that the um, the number the best time to get long is right after sell stops were taken, and that's basically where we got long. I think that whenever you see the market forming these two opposing liquidity pools that are very evenly distributed like that that that's a sign that the algorithm probably wants to run both sides and uh, seek and destroy both sides. And I think that the algorithm is clearing out liquidity in order to make its uh, whatever intended move it has because it's easier to move price when it's th thinner liquidity than thicker, which is a big misconception that people have that you need volume to move price, which is absurd. Actually, the price reprices when it's a thinner book much faster, obviously, because there are fewer orders you have to get through. So, now we've quickly sped up and repriced to here, where we are right now, and now we're just slowing down a little bit, a little bit of time distortion here. A little bit of time distortion. Allowing, allowing anyone who thinks that this is a trend line, you know, whatever trend line they're using, they're going to bet on that trend line holding. It's not. But it's a little bit of time and price distortion right here. They're going to, I call it hanging or hanging the price for 30 seconds, a minute, whatever they're doing. They're allowing traders to get trapped to put in a market order to go short here. That's time distortion. This market is designed to quickly and efficiently strip you of your capital. As it's a zero sum game. It's just the same, a lot of it is the same money being rotated over and over and over again. So remember these candles, they all they all look static, right? After a minute has passed, you see open, high, low, and close. But the velocity at which they're forming or repricing changes, and, and that's called time distortion. So you want to be cognizant of time distortion. And over time, you'll notice why they appear to be hanging the market where they are. Because remember, they could reprice it up to 1919 right this second. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. Certainly not on the micro Russell. They could take out enough orders to reprice you there instantly. But that's not how they do it. They're going to hang. This is time distortion. They're just kind of hanging it there now. Allowing everybody who thinks that this is a trend line to make the wrong decision. Time distortion. I don't really want to see it get below here. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. 
still make a profit on the trade. I, th I believe, it is my belief, that they are allowing this trend line to form in order to build up liquidity. So, what we should see now, if you were to look on your liquidity books, is two levels of uh, buy-side liquidity. And I believe that they're using, the algorithms are using um, time distortion to make sure that this first level of buy-side liquidity thickens up a little bit. So you'll notice the time distortion, we slowed down the candles a lot. We we're hanging price to allow the buy stops to build up. Time distortion. All is not what it seems. Now, of course, I could be wrong. And in which case, I'd get long at the second, this second liquidity pool. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this first liquidity pool because we did take that. So if you were looking at bookmap, it would look something like this. And you don't, you don't need bookmap to see this because it's always there. And we have this inefficiency up right there. We have not filled that in by a tick. And that should be that might be a cue to your trading algorithms. So we they basically hung price to allow people betting on this trend line uh, allow them time to get in the wrong side, enter in at the market. They always want market orders because it's a game of liquidity. They're short from higher. They're long from lower. They've got pos smart money has positions. Trading algorithms have positions that they need to offset. Okay, so we've allowed time for people to bet on that trend line. And so we've built up liquidity here now. But I think that we want both sides of uh, buy side. Because I think our higher time frame draw is at 1928. So trading algorithms are going to be long from here, right where we're long. And they're going to be offset distributing their long positions from 1910, offset distributing them here, and I presume up where my order is as well. Offset distribution uh, happens quickly. So time is not uniform. It did, the price did not move from my from my position up here in a uniform manner. The candles may appear to be uniform, but they're not uniform. They they speed up and they slow down. And whenever they slow down, during the everything past Frankfurt, whenever Frankfurt opens, during the London session, during the cash session, New York, if the market slows down, it's for a reason. That reason is to build up liquidity, but it's time distortion. So once they, the market makers, the composite man, I just call them trading algorithms. Once the algorithm has allowed sufficient liquidity built to build up, it will then violently and efficiently reprice to that area of liquidity. So if you see that the market is moving faster, trading algorithms have allowed enough liquidity to build up in order to reprice you there. 
So the accumulation is, is uh, slow and grinding, the time distortion. But time distortion works two ways, okay? It's slow when the smart money is building up its positions. It's slow, okay? And that's in order to trap retail into the wrong side uh, and to build up the liquidity. The offset distribution, so remember, the, the smart money is long from down here, where my long is. So now that we're coming into to buy side liquidity, the offset, once smart money starts offsetting its positions, it should quickly reprice the market higher. It shouldn't be a slow affair, it should be a quick affair. So the time distortion when they're building up the liquidity is slow and then when they're punching through the liquidity the time distortion is fast and that's part of the thing that can throw you off when you haven't ever traded live or you haven't used these concepts before um, you think that all the candles will form in a uniform manner and they don't they speed up and they slow down and everything is with intention. Everything is designed to fool retail. Whether you're using trend lines, chart patterns, DOM trading, jig, jigsaw, whatever. It's all designed to fool retail, which is why 90% lose. Because everything about this game is designed to fool you. Everything. The algorithms are coded to fool you. Now... Notice, do you see how we rejected this here? This is allowing more liquidity. So what we're doing right now is price distortion. So we were watching time distortion for a while. Now we're watching price distortion. And what is price distortion? Whenever you come up to a pool of liquidity, like the second red box, and you see that price rejects like that right before it, yeah, it was probably a good idea for me to exit the long there. That would have been fine. But what I believe is happening is we're, we are manufacturing more buy stops, more liquidity which is what the algorithm is designed to do it's designed to maximize the liquidity formation so we've now exhausted this first area of liquidity or not exhausted it but we've moved through it so I'm going to remove it now notice that we have these three equal highs now your support and resistance retail traders are also going to go short at the market. They're going to go short at the market with a stop above. They're going to think that this candle right here is a confirmation that this is uh, resistance. But it's not because notice that the real structure is down here. Okay, we didn't break that structure so it's this candle is a, a deception candle. It's a distortion candle. Now it could be used as an algorithmic signature later, but everything is designed to fool retail. Everything. This is war. This is conflict. This is not. Uh, this is not e harmony. So everything that, that you're taught in books, everything that's taught on trading discords, everything that's taught on trading YouTube, it's all wrong. It's all exactly the opposite of what the market is doing, unless it's ICT, <laughs> unless it's algorithmic. It has to be algorithmic because that's, that's actually what's happening with the market. The market is controlled by trading algorithms, and the only way that you are going to be successful is to understand what the trading algorithms are doing and how they're distorting time so look they're slowing down now 
slowing down. We're watching it live. I mean, this is a real cash account. It's small, granted. But this is my real cash account. It's not fake dollars. These are all real trades. But I'm doing it on a recording because I don't want the pressure of being live. But this is my trade station account. You see, when you look at the price in hindsight, it looks like this was easy. But it but it's not easy. Because now, oh, you know, now you see the double and the triple bottom pattern, right? You wouldn't have seen it in time. No way. Once it becomes, once the, once the algorithm has you close enough to the objective, it's going to quickly spool to it because at that point the 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 jig, the the deception is up. So once we get around here, and it's going to be obvious, right, what, what happened here. Once the deception is over, and we're within a few points of the target, they should quickly spool higher. I'm going to go ahead and exit. I, I don't know if that was a good exit or not. But that was 5.1 points. I want to see how much money I made. Oop. Yeah, that was good. Nobody watching this video anyways. So now I'm neutral. I was, yeah, pretty much had it nailed, I think. I think I left $30 on the table. Time and price distortion. Price distortion, you can see on the chart in hindsight. Time distortion, you, you have to be watching the candles paint to see it. Because it's when they slow down the market then to speed it up again. That's time distortion. Okay, I might come back later. Um, I'm going to take a break from trading now. I, I need to take a break. Talk to you later.